cylindrical and spherical coordinates. So let's start off by reviewing. Today we're going to introduce two new, well, maybe they're new, maybe they're not, but two different coordinate systems other than the rectangular coordinate system that we've been using up until now to talk about space three dimensions. So to start off, we're going to review polar coordinates in two dimensions. So to relate the rectangular xy coordinate system to the polar coordinate system of r comma theta, we have the relationship r is equal to or x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine of theta. Really just an extension of uh, thinking back to trigonometry here. You have your unit circle, so a circle of radius one. We know that a point on there is cosine of theta gives the x value and sine of theta gives the y value. So if we're just to scale that radius up to r instead of one, you have r cosine of theta and r sine of theta for x and y respectively. Um, other relationships we have is that tangent of theta can be found as y over x, and that's just an exploitation of uh, right triangle trigonometry. Think of this as a triangle uh, set right there in the first quadrant. And so theta here, if you look at the vertical as y and the adjacent or as x, then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent is equal to opposite y over adjacent x. And then last but not least, uh, again, returning up here, thinking that this point is given by x and y, then you have y and x here, and then r being the radius. So you've just got an application of the Pythagorean theorem to give you x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now below at the bottom, I have a uh, copied in here an image of a polar grid. And you can see on it that the positive x-axis is considered the polar axis. So we start our angle zero uh, at zero at the polar axis there, positive x-axis. And then we go anti-clockwise around. So you see that pi is over here, and et cetera, just like regular old trigonometry. And then the concentric circles are the radius portion of it. So cylindrical coordinates are an extension of the polar coordinate system in the plane, two dimensions, two space, three dimensions. And so we just take x and y out of the picture and we use polar coordinates to represent the plane. So we have r and theta, as you can see below in the image. So in the plane, r and theta move us, give us our location in the plane. And then z is just the height above that, uh, just the same as in rectangular space, the height either above or below the related polar point in the plane. In fact, some people don't call them cylindrical coordinates, just call them polar coordinates. Uh, but both our texts call them cylindrical coordinates, and that seems to be more common. So what kind of surfaces can we generate if we fix one of the variables in cylindrical coordinates? So if you fix just an angle in red, if you fix theta equals pi over 3, you generate the plane. If you let the radius be positive, you'll generate the positive portion of the, the plane that is shown. And if you allow for negative radiuses, as we know that we can in polar coordinates, that will generate this kind of back half of the plane that isn't shown in our image. Point is fixing theta and letting r and z run wild will give you a plane in the direction of the angle theta. Um, if you fix z, then well, that's the same. Z is the same as uh, in xy coordinate, xyz coordinates. So r and theta will get you anywhere on the xy plane. And then z fixed at 2 means that you can go anywhere on that plane, just at the height 2. Fixing r is kind of like fixing a radius in the plane. And letting theta vary will lead to a circle in the plane. And if you have a circle in the plane, and let the height of that circle vary, as we've seen before, you'll generate a vertical cylinder. So let's learn how to convert between cylindrical and rectangular coordinate systems. All right, so if we have a cylindrical point, um, 5 pi over 6, 4, that's r comma theta comma z, then to convert to the rectangular coordinate systems, we rely on the polar conversions. So x is given by r cosine of theta. So just substituting in 5 in for r, 
pi over six in for theta, we got x is equal to five cosine of pi over six, which gives us five root three over two. Similar logic gives us y, uh, the y coordinate is r sine of theta, giving us five over two. And z equals four, there's no change, it is the same. So the cylindrical point five pi over six, four is the same as the rectangular point, uh, five root three over two, five over two, four. Only we have r theta comma z and x comma y comma z, which is cylindrical versus rectangular. So now here's a two dimensional image uh, that kind of shows, yeah, okay, this makes some sense here. Um, let's have a look at this calculator. All right, so here you have this point uh, plotted in polar, like we saw, and we could switch that. We can switch the settings of the graph here by using this little wrench icon to go to rectangular grid. And all right, so there you go. You can see by clicking label that five root three over two is about 4.33, sure enough. And then five root three two is two and a half. All that looks good there. And then putting it back in polar, you can see that sure enough, it is the same point. All right, so one note about Desmos is it can plot, uh, it cannot plot polar points. It's only capable of plotting X, Y points. At least I don't know how, if there is a way, but I'm pretty confident there isn't. So this time, let's go the other direction. Let's convert this, uh, let's convert from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. All right, uh, another typo, forgive me. This should say we are gonna convert from rectangular to cylindrical. Okay, so to do that, Sorry, my annotations are going to disappear on this next slide, but yeah, blue, uh, the blue header is correct. We're converting from rectangular to cylindrical. So the point given is rectangular, not cylindrical. So we're going to find, whoops, we're going to find the radius first. So to do that, we're going to use the x squared plus y squared equals r squared relationship. And substituting our x value for negative 8 and y value for 8, we see that r is equal to 8 root 2. Now, polar coordinates aren't unique, so we're choosing r to be positive. If, with a, if you combine it with a different angle, you could get to a negative r version with a different angle, but we're going to choose r to be positive. Next, we're going to take our rectangular point and find theta. So to do this, we'll use the relationship tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And tangent of theta is equal to negative eight for, or that should be positive eight over negative eight, um, y over x. Either way, the third line down is still correct. Tangent of theta is equal to negative one, which tells us that theta is some multiple of pi over four because tangent of theta equals sine over cosine, uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta. Uh, root two over root two will lead to positive one. So we just have some version of of a, a multiple of pi over four. Here's where taking a look at this in the xy plane can be really helpful. We plot negative eight, positive eight. We see that we're nicely in quadrant two. And which version of pi over four is in quadrant two? Well, you've got pi over four here. Two pi over four is pi over two, so the 90 vertical y-axis. And then you have three pi over four, which is what we concluded down at the bottom of the slide as well. So our rectangular x, y, z coordinate, negative eight, eight, negative seven, is in rectangular, uh, in cylindrical coordinates, eight root two for our radius, three pi over four for our theta, and z remains the same, negative seven. And plotting them side by side, we can see that in correct rectangular coordinates, the x, y plane, we have negative eight, eight. And then if you switch into polar view, you can see that sure enough, it's, an, it's on that three pi over four angle, and it's a distance of eight root two 
uh, away from the origin radius wise. So now that we've learned uh, or reviewed how to convert between uh, polar coordinates and regular rectangular xy coordinates, we want to be able to convert equations between the coordinate systems as well. So converting between cylindrical and rectangular equations is the same as converting polar and rectangular equations in the plane, just leaving z well enough alone. So to go from rectangular to polar equations, the game is to make substitutions until you have an equation in only r, theta, and z. Using the substitutions, x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta, and then algebraing your result into shape. Um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared and tangent of theta equals y over x can also be helpful. So that's cylindrical coordinates. Now the second coordinate system, and this is most likely new to some of you completely, are called spherical coordinates. So spherical points are of the form p is equal to rho theta phi. And those are written down below. Um, where rho is, and these are all Greek letters, just like theta, uh, rho is the distance between the point and the origin. So have a look down on our screen there. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. You've got rho there. So rho is the distance between the point and the origin. And theta is the same as in cylindrical coordinates. It's the angle uh, in the xy plane off of the positive x-axis. So we've got theta is equal to that. And then phi, let's see, we'll use red. Phi is the angle formed with the positive z-axis and the position vector for point P. Okay. Now there's some notes about phi. Phi is limited to between zero and pi over two with phi is equal to zero is on the positive pi axis. Well, if you start with phi is equal to zero, uh, right here on the positive x on the positive z axis, then as you descend downward, you're going to be able to go how far before we are kind of um, redundant. Well, remember, since theta is allowed to vary in the entire circle all the way around the xy plane, if we were to allow phi to go past the negative z axis, past the angle i, and all the way up to 2 pi, we would have a lot of redundancy there. And so to fix this problem, we limit phi to only vary between, oops, well, I erased more than I intended to, but I think it's okay. We'll erase it all now. Phi is only allowed to vary between 0 and pi, where 0 is the positive z-axis. And then when you get all the way down to the negative z-axis, it's pi, and you're finished. And so if I were to highlight that, that would look like that. So those are spherical spherical points and spherical coordinates. To relate the two systems, we have these equations. X is equal to rho sine of phi cosine of theta. Y is equal to rho sine of phi sine of theta. And I'm reasonably confident these are correct, but I've made some mistakes in the last few. So make sure you're double checking all these because I do type these from scratch. I do my best, but I have made the occasional mistake. Uh, rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and z is given by rho cosine of phi. Tangent is y over x. Tangent of theta is y over x because it's the same role that we're playing in the uh, polar coordinates. And then phi, whoops, I forgot to change it. All right, so this right here, whoops, is not, that's, uh, I think that's capital phi. That's meant to be phi. So phi is equal to, if you want it, if you need to identify phi, it's arc cosine of z over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, if you need to relate uh, spherical to cylindrical coordinates, you can use these formulas at the bottom. Well, since theta, but before you look at the formulas, look at the comment at the very, very bottom. Uh, since theta is the same in the two coordinate systems, there's not much to do to convert theta. So all you have to worry about is relating r, z, R and Z in cylindrical and phi and rho in spherical. So R can be found as rho sine of phi, Z can be found as rho cosine of phi, and rho is equal to the square root of R squared plus C squared. And then phi is given by arc cosine of Z over R squared plus C squared. And that really is just 
you know, z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared uh, in uh, polar to rectangular. So that's just that substitution there. So there's a lot of formulas there, but that's how you relate the two coordinate systems. So for example, let's convert the rectangular coordinate two, negative two, four to spherical coordinates. So the first thing we'll do is we'll note that tangent of theta is equal to y over x would give us theta. So negative two over two is equal to negative one. And again, uh, here we're looking at, hey, um, two, negative two is down here in quadrant four. And so theta is going to be between zero and two pi. And so down here in quadrant four, theta is seven pi over four. To find rho, you take the square root of the sum of all uh, the square of all the, the sum of the squares of the coordinates, and you get two root six. And then last but not least, to find phi, you take inverse cosine of z over, um, for all intents and purposes, rho, uh, the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates, and you get that phi is about 0 0.62 radians. And here is a nice example of this. I encourage you to take some time to explore the resources on the course site. There are lots of nice um, graphs and uh, resources there as well with respect to these coordinate systems. And so here is our example that we just worked. You can see that the point is 2, negative 2, 4. And I've labeled everything. It's not perfect. It cut off the theta label there. But if it's 7 pi over what would be a 4 if it would show all of it, you can see that the purple phi off of the positive z axis is 0.62 uh, radians. And I didn't label rho in here. But if we did, it would be, I want to say it was 6 root 2 or 2 root 6 or something like that. All right, back to the thing. But yeah, just moving this around kind of. You can sort of see, hey, here's the regular orientation. You can see looking down from above that sure enough, our point, our x, y point would be in the quadrant four. And then let's see what else. And that's all we've got for um, spherical and cylindrical coordinates.